Running speaker wires and doing cable management is not the most fun thing to do. When I started converting and building this home theater, I originally wanted to run all the cables through the walls for a super clean look. Well, needless to say, that didn't quite work out. What's up guys? So in this video, which is episode four, I believe, of my home theater build series, I'll be talking about and doing wiring runs for all the speakers, including the speakers I have now, as well as potential upgrades in the future. So that way I don't have to do all the wiring over again. I'll also be doing some cable channel runs as long as they show up today from Amazon. And I'll also be doing some electrical outlet work. I'm replacing the white electrical outlets with black and the light switch with a black one to kind of match the aesthetic of the room. And then finally, we're going to be installing all of my AV equipment, my game consoles and everything into the entertainment stand and putting the TV on top. So I'm almost there to have a fully functioning home theater again. I dude, I cannot wait. So you know what? Let's just get started. So we decided to go ahead and start with the entertainment stand, mainly because all the components need to go in there anyway. And all the HDMI cables and speaker cables need to be hooked up to the receiver. Now, I really like this entertainment stand, except for one thing. In order to fit any type of center channel in the bottom here, I know it's not the best placement. You have to unscrew the back. Well, to do that, you really need to take the TV or whatever you have on there off. So my original plan to wall mount the TV was going to mitigate that by not having to do that. Here I'm actually detaching and then reattaching each banana plug and the main reason is I found over the years as I moved sometimes those things get a little loose it can actually cause a slight short in the connection or static in your speaker. I've just found that it's much easier to do that now when you're hooking everything up than to try to troubleshoot later and to figure it out. Now it doesn't really matter here because I'm going to be using brand new cables so I had to detach them anyway but it's something I've always done for quite a few years now and I've never ran into issues since I started doing it. So here you'll notice I have this little makeshift mini DSP holder. It's basically a couple of huge paper clamp things that I got from Dollar Tree and then some zip ties. And it's worked really well for the past year or so I've had the mini DSP. Now, another reason I wanted to get all this done right now is having ample access to the back of the entertainment stand. Normally when things are right up against the wall or near the wall, you guys know, you have very limited access to get back there and cable manage the way you want to do it. Well, this allows me to do it and while it's not perfect it's good enough and I don't have to worry about fire hazards or big bunches of cables or if I need to swap something out should be relatively easy. I also wanted to make custom ethernet cables for all seven components so 14 ends total and not having made batches of ethernet cables in a long time my fingers were definitely sore from straightening out all the cable ends to fit in the RJ45 connectors so definitely take a break don't do what I did and if you have any tips for straightening those cables out other than using the a sleeve jacket let me know in the comment section below because you never know it might help somebody else out as well all right so we have everything in the av rack and it looks awesome i just went with the same kind of layout i had before i know where everything is looks nice and clean i like it i did all the cable management behind it may be kind of hard to see it's not the best but uh it will work for now sorry the camera won't focus i did custom length ethernet cables for all devices so that's all of the consoles here anything that could be hardwired is hardwired so receiver blu-ray player apple tv nvidia shield ps5 xbox series x and the tv which is going up here i just haven't terminated that end yet i just kind of don't know how much i need and then over here we're going to start working on these speaker cable runs so i have a brand new uh 200 foot spool here of gear it wire in black and then i have a 158 spool of white wire here and that's for a reason so originally as i may have mentioned in earlier videos i intended to run cables in in the walls. Initially, I was gonna go with in-wall speakers as well, but as we got here and we started poking around, I used a stud finder and realized since all of the walls around me, except for, sorry, I don't make you, mean to make you dizzy, except for the back wall here where the door and the closets are, everything else is outward facing, meaning on the other side of the wall, is the outdoors so for whatever reason between each stud which is 16 feet apart are three fire blocks or fire breaks i can never remember exactly what they're called but if you're not familiar with that it's basically another stud or a two by four in between the studs and it starts in this house at four feet and then six feet and then eight feet so there's three that kind of limits what i can do in terms of in walls and stuff so what i'm going to end up doing is I'm just using a regular speaker cable and I'll explain the black and white here in a moment. I'll be going up through the drop ceiling and then routing the cables out to where they need to go through cable channels, minus the front speakers. It doesn't really make sense because they're all right here. 
next to the receiver there. So it doesn't really make sense to run those. So the reason I went with black though, those are gonna be for all the bed channels. Now, you won't be able to see much speaker wire with those, but you will be able to see some, I'm sure, depending on where you're standing. So if you're gonna see the cable, I want them to be black. So I have 200 feet of that. That should be more than enough. I think I calculated about 153 feet total. And again, I'm wiring for seven bed channels, even though I only have five right now, just for future upgrades so I don't have to run the wire again. And then for the height speakers, I normally run everything in top middle, but since I have the cables, I'm actually going to wire for top fronts, top middles, and top rears. I know this is an 11 by 12 room, it's small. I have the cable, I wanna do it. And if I wanna do some comparisons and experiments between top fronts, top middles, and top rears, make a video about it and let you guys know uh, what I've found, then I think that's even more reason to do it. Plus I already have the cable, so why not? Anyway, that's why I went with black for the bed channels and whites for the Atmos or height channels. You'll never see those. They're gonna be up in the drop ceiling, so don't need to worry about it. Now in terms of routing the cables, I'm actually, I've already started with this one. This is the ethernet cable. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on. I basically cut just a very small hole inside there. Now I need to make this a bit bigger for the other cables. Basically all the right side cables are gonna go through this hole. And then I'm gonna make another incision Incision, incision like I'm a doctor. I'm gonna make another incision over here on uh, this tile. Just kind of match the distance between the two. And this is gonna handle all the left side stuff as well as the subwoofer cables, which are all gonna go back here next to the closet. So my goal here is to run the cables uh, down the corner of this. It'll be two subwoofer cables and two speaker wires for the back, left, and right surrounds. And they'll just come down here following the uh, trim here all the way down and then they'll come out down here sorry it's a little dark i'll have a light back here the subs will be somewhere around this area i'm gonna try to run four i don't know we'll see but anyway i'm gonna cover this all up here because i'm gonna be moving ceiling tiles around while i'm putting the speaker wire up i've already dusted and everything it's all clean i don't have to do that again so i'll cover that up and then we'll get started on the speaker wire stuff I decided to start on the left side of the room, mainly because it had the most wire runs at a total of eight, with the right side only needing four. I cut a large enough hole on the front ceiling tile and wasn't too worried about it being a bit too big, as honestly, it would just be hidden by the curtain anyway. And it also gives me a bit more room in case I ever want to or need to upgrade to XLR cables down the road. Now honestly, none of this was really difficult, just time consuming and involved me getting up and down the step stool about 500 times. I started with the two subwoofer cables, then moved on to the back left and right surround cables which I coiled up and placed on the top of the back ceiling tile. I cut a very small hole for the left surround speaker and routed that through. Now I ended up cutting the hole too small at first but this ended up working out as all I had to do was shave off a little bit more and it was just large enough to fit the speaker wire through. Now the height ceiling wires were the easiest starting with the top rear and moving my way up to the front. Like the back surround speakers I coiled each cable up and then put them on a ceiling tile near where the actual speaker may go but made sure to give myself enough extra extra cable on the end to allow for flexibility when placing the speaker. Now, this really came in handy later when I installed my top middle speakers in the wrong location, which you'll see and I'll talk about in the next build video. I then moved on to the right side of the room, which only had a total of four speaker wire runs, thankfully. I started with the right surround because like the left side, I needed to cut a hole in the ceiling tile and figured I'd get the most time consuming wire out of the way first. The height ceiling wire runs went in just like the left side, coiling them up and placing them on top of the ceiling tile while making sure to give myself some extra cable on the end. I then zip tied all the wires together on each side and made sure the curtain hid all the wires behind it. And it did. With the curtains closed, you can't even tell there are wires going up from the floor to the drop ceiling. It looks super clean. All right, so I may have went ahead a little bit of you guys and forgot to record some things. I know, I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know what happens when you get in the zone, you're just kind of working, listening to music, totally forgot to hit record. And before I knew it, I installed all of the wall outlets, all of the cable channels, and I also got all the subs in their place. Pretty wild that I didn't even realize that it was 2.30 in the morning. So here is the TV all in its place. It looks awesome. I actually moved the Valencia seats back about six, seven inches because honestly it was way too close. I did some things behind the TV here. Uh, not the best wire management right now, but these are all little things that I could touch up later. And I also installed, installed. I also put my uh, PS5 controller charging station there for now, just behind the TV. You can't even see it, so that's really cool. The outlets went in with no problem whatsoever. Honestly, I'm realizing that 
everything in this room is hard to photograph because it's all black or dark gray. Yeah, just change the outlets to black and uh, with the black wall plates. The only one I didn't do was this one over here. And that's because it has like three different cables behind it and I didn't buy the proper outlet for that. So maybe that's something I'll do down the road, but honestly, can you see it? I can't. So you know what? Out of sight, out of mind. I got the subwoofers in place here as well. And I'll show you the uh, cable channels real quick. So these have not been painted. They will be the color of the wall here. And then I think when I go up top here, these come with these little, uh, wow, my fingers in focus again. They come with these little uh, end pieces or they actually go between them, but I just, I don't like how they look. Painted, this will actually pretty much blend in perfectly. I wanna cover that hole. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the little end pieces and just paint them black. And so we have three throughout the room. So we have the one right here, the one in the back right here, just uh, below the AC vent, and I ran that down. Um, you could see the subwoofer back here, the PB1000 Pro, got my surge protector, Valencia seats plugged in. And then the other one here, which I, honestly, they're not gonna be too hard. I can just paint them by hand, no big deal. But like I said earlier, it's like 2.30, almost three o'clock in the morning now, and I'm beat, so I'm gonna go to bed. Thank you so much for watching, sticking around. Hope you're enjoying the series of videos. I'm enjoying making it, even though I forget to hit record sometimes. If you enjoyed the videos please feel free to give it a like and also leave a comment down below let me know and if you have any advice or recommendations or just want to say hey you know I've done this before too uh, it's a lot of fun but also a lot of work you know leave a comment down below I'd really appreciate it and I love connecting with you guys thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one